What's going on everybody? This is going to be part three of my AC build. Uh, I went ahead and got the old condenser out of the Jeep. As you can see, it's all nasty and it's got this weird fitting on it. Um, so I went ahead and went just a universal fit. I had to move the radiator out of the way. Kind of just pulled the whole grill off and got it set in there. Um, at least from what I've seen online, I haven't really asked anybody yet. And I'm really no by means an AC professional. I'm kind of just figuring all this out as I go along. But um, from what I've seen in a bunch of videos, or not videos, but diagrams and pictures of AC, you want the big end. There's going to be like a big side and a small side. Um, you want the big end up top. So, uh, it will be high pressure vapor coming out of the compressor goes to the top end of the condenser, which would be the big end comes through here. The fan cools it down. So it's now high pressure liquid. It leaves the bottom small side then would go to your dryer. Then from the dryer, it goes to the expansion valve. Expansion valve goes to the big end of the... Hmm, I don't remember that. That was a relook at it, but I'm sure I'll update it here in a little bit. But it goes to the evaporator, and from the evaporator, it goes back to the compressor. So as of now, this is how I've got it set. Top ends up here, the big ends up top, the small ends down below. Um, I'm gonna have to cut a hole right there for this fitting to be able to go through. Um, also, you wanna keep the caps on everything as long as possible because you don't want moisture getting in. Uh, all these systems, because moisture will ruin an AC system. So keep the caps on as long as possible we not do anything, cap them back off just to try and eliminate any sort of moisture that gets in, especially with the dryer. Um, so yeah, once I get some more done, I will uh, be back. Also today, I also got the finished product of my AC mount. So it's mounted, it's all painted. I ended up getting the pulley built as well and the pulley bracket. Um, it goes from the bottom of the alternator up to a bolt underneath the water neck. It was seven inches long, and I just used a piece of that load backrest there. I want to say it's quarter inch as well, but it's just what I had laying around, so I went ahead and used it. Um, but here's the part number I got from AutoZone for the pulley. And for my setup, it is this part number for the belt. Um, this belt here is 82 and a half inches long and it's an eight rib. Um, so yeah, if you don't wanna to go to AutoZone or you go to NAP or whatever, just at least if you're building this sort of setup, you're gonna be looking around an 82, uh, maybe 83 inch belt. So you can just let them know and if they're competent and they know what they're doing, uh, they can get you the right belt. So yeah, I'm gonna finish working on this, get some more stuff done, and I'll be back. All right, so I just got the hole drilled to the back side, and now I'm gonna start making this first hose that goes from the top of the condenser to the small side of the compressor. Um, this kit that I got, the universal crimp style AC system um, hoses they come with these crimp fittings and it's the same same type of process I guess you do making a hydraulic hose uh, but it came with this oil um, normally when I make forklift hoses I just spray some chain lube in there uh, just in the first part of the hose and just a little bit on the fitting itself just to make it slide easier um, but obviously with an AC system you don't want to do that so they supply you with some oil so what I'm going to do with this 
is just dribble a little bit around the edge of this and drip some down the end of that. Um, also, what you want to do before, sorry about that, is you want to take a look um, if there's numbers on the fitting or the hose. What you want to do is just place it right here to the end where this thing's going to bottom out. And you want to see exactly where this fitting is supposed to line up. So if you push it on and it only goes to here, you've still got that much more to go. So, you know, mark it with a marker or if it's got like right here, mine will be right at the right past the parentheses right there. So you just want to look at that before you go and just go shoving this on because you might not have it on all the way. And it's usually difficult to get off once it's on. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to get that one fitted and on not really crimped because i could probably crimp it with my machine but i'm going to take it up to a hydraulic shop just so i know that it's crimped properly because i might not have the right dies to uh, squish that down but yeah i'm going to get this one fitted on i'm going to get it hooked up to the condenser and run the hose through and figure out how long i need to get it to go to the high side fitting that'll go here I'm not sure if I want to run it this way or run, run them both back this way and just have extra hose. It's probably what I'm going to end up doing just so if I ever need to service this system, the hose is long enough to where I can move stuff around without disconnecting it. All right, so I got the hose on there and this hose is going to the high side on the compressor. Unfortunately, with the hose kit I got, this is the only compressor fitting or fitting to the compressor that'll fit. Um, so this bend is really messing me up just because of everything I got going on here because of my air box and everything is kind of just in the way. Um, so for me, I can either run it around and it'd have to go underneath this intake here to make that angle right. Uh, but I don't really want to run it that close to the exhaust and chances of rubbing stuff. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is just come straight to here and just give me some slack here probably like that just to where it's not going to rub anything but i've still got enough room to where i can move this compressor around uh take it off without having to actually you know disconnect the system and all that fun stuff so i'm gonna end up using these here to cut it nice hose cutters they work really well so i'll get this thing marked exactly where i want to cut it and get this cut and get this fitting on and kind of just dry fit everything real quick um just so that way I've, I've got all my hoses made so then i can take them all up to a hydraulic shop at once and get them all done all right so we're just gonna take this just kind of squirt a little bit of this oil On the fitting, not too much. Just kind of around it. I didn't use too much, just a little bit. Um, and then same with the hose itself. Kind of just squirt it all around. You don't want to use too much because you got to do all your fittings like this and you got to lubricate your O-rings before the end of this is over. Um, just cap it off so no more dirt and stuff gets in there uh, but this one here doesn't have any sort of markings anywhere close by so I'm just gonna take this paint pen real quick and put a little dot where this fitting should end and it's a nice snug fit so don't forget your big boy pants at home, but push and twist. And that's all the way on. And now I'm going to get this hooked up. Well, I guess I can just show you. It's not that hard. Oh boy. I'm dropping stuff. Going to get all dirt all in this. Alright, 
So we got that. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is just take this paint pen and mark the fitting and mark the hose just so I know whenever I go to take this to the uh, hydraulic shop to get them compressed and crimped just to make sure that these fittings didn't move any because how I've got it, it's gonna need to be clocked basically just right for it to fit. So I'm gonna move this out of the way so it doesn't rub a hole. And that should still be plenty enough room, I guess. I guess we'll see <laughs> in the future, but I would have liked this to have been a lot longer, but I could, could have made it deeper, but I'm planning on moving these shocks up higher to get this the ride height of the Jeep down a little bit. Uh, I plan on doing that sometime soon. So I don't wanna hurt myself by putting it too low and then figuring out what I have to do with this later. Um, I'm probably gonna end up zip tying this up to the top whenever this is out of the way just to kind of keep it from getting tangled in anything or i don't know so yeah that's done on to the next hose i'm gonna be doing this bottom one here to a dryer i gotta figure out where i want to put that dryer uh, the dryer here just got an in and out so it'll be going in this side i've got to put the binary switch on one of these ports so depending on where this gets mounted, I guess depends on which one this goes to. So yeah, I'll be back. Real quick, I just noticed this holes are actually an indicator of whether you've got it seated all the way or not. Um, I just noticed that, so you can look for that as well. And some of these, the first couple I did were really tight but uh, the rest of them really aren't. So you can use this oil if you want to help lubricate it and just make sure that it's, everything's going in nice and um, smooth and you're not getting nothing burred up and anything like that. But as of now, I don't think that it's necessarily needed, but it's not gonna hurt anything. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out real quick. All right, so I got the hose mage that goes from the bottom of the condenser up to the dryer. I ended up just drilling two holes and running a zip tie through a hose clamp to mount this thing for now. I don't necessarily like this, but for now it works. So this is how I'm gonna run it until something breaks, until either that zip tie breaks or probably the zip tie's gonna break before anything, but for now this will work. Um, so it comes from the condenser up to the end part of the dryer and then from the dryer it's going to go to the thermal expansion valve knowing what I know now I wish I would have bought one with a longer uh, lead on the end because this comes from the dryer goes in obviously the inside but if yours doesn't have a sign it's the small end because there's gonna be a small and big end so it goes in the small end um, goes out the larger end and this feeds on the opposite end um, of the feed so this actually goes to the big side I told you wrong earlier so this goes in from the dryer it comes out goes to the evaporator comes through the evaporator this, the sensing bulb on it goes to the outside the out of the evaporator that, and then from there it goes to the compressor. Looking back, or I guess if I were to do this again, I would have bought one that had a longer lead on it because this really limits me to where I can put it. I'm basically going to have to slap it like right on top of that turbo and sus suspend it up, I guess, by this bar. Um, but I kind of wish that I would have bought this long, had this longer, so then I could have put it pretty much anywhere I wanted and been able to have it fitted um, I got a buddy of mine who sent me that other fitting it's because of that quick connect um, that one's there that one's missing he's sending me another one that he chopped off his old Jeep so once that comes in I'm gonna braze on fittings to the ends of these so I'll be able to run the hose uh, to finish up running the hoses um, and go from there so that's pretty much going to be into the end of this video until I get the rest of those fittings so I can make the hoses. Uh, 
next video hopefully i'll have the fittings done and we're going to start working on the electrical side of it appreciate you watching stay tuned